the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and the Holy Spirit told me a phrase before I got on here that's very powerful. And the Holy Spirit said this to me. He said that promotion is better than mercy. Now, I want you to hear that. I want you to remember that. Promotion is better than mercy. Promotion is better than mercy. Promotion is better than mercy. In the promotion realm is because you have been doing something divine consecutively. Promotion means that you're doing something divine consecutively. You know what I mean? You consecutively, you, you are doing something divine consecutively, meaning that fruit of the spirit is being seen on you constantly. And so the Lord told me, promotion is better than mercy. Because see, mercy is when you're struggling to do something divine. And, and watch this. Remember I told you struggle is deception. And the fact that struggle is deception, it really doesn't exist. A demon has to convince you through the realm, through the ministry of vain imaginations. A, a demon has to convince you through the ministry of vain imaginations to believe that you're struggling, even financially. Because saints, even when I didn't see a lot of money, I didn't listen to a demon telling me not a money, not a lot of money. I listened to Abraham because his spirit inside of me testifying of the blessing. His spirit inside of me testifying of abundance. And then I got Jesus spirit, John 10, 10, testifying of life and life more abundantly. And I got Jesus inside of this meeting where the people don't know where they're going to eat. And Jesus asking Philip, where are we going to find food for all these people? This same Jesus inside of me. Remember this term, the ministry of vain imaginations. Is a, is a Holy Ghost term that he gave me. The ministry of vain imaginations. So the ministry of vain imaginations is where evil spirits minister to you a wrong sight system, a wrong perspective, and they come, um, dang, could I say it like that? Expectation suicide. Expect, <laughs> expectation suicide. So in this aspect, your expectation kills itself because of the imaginations that are being sent through the wrong photographer. Man, 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 I got so much wisdom on me. What am I do? What, what am I do? <laughs> what? You know what to do. You know what to do. What I'm going to do? Huh? What I'm going to do? Saints, we reached over 1 million people in 24 hours. Wait, when I, when I went live yesterday, we reached over a million. Saints, we reached over 7.7 .7 million people. Saints, I went to a mall yesterday. I was, uh, I was over there. Um, I was on this rare side. And uh, they was like, hey, 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 you're the prophet. Young little teenagers. 
They with their girlfriend up there with the lean going to me. You, oh, you the prophet. Like, brother, how you walk like you 68? You ain't supposed to be rocking like that. Y'all got some new diseases or something, because this ain't right. You, you ain't supposed to be walking like that, man, like Bill Cosby, brother. You, they, listen, that foot not supposed to come around here and then turn all the way around. It's not supposed to turn around. When you, when you hit that turn, when you hit the turn, it's supposed to keep on turning. <laughs> You're not supposed to come around here and make a 360. No, man. You ain't supposed to do that. Y'all got some new, new. You got some, <laughs> you got some upgraded functions because this, Ain't supposed to take you all the way around the mountain. You you went around more times than Moses did. Huh? How you gonna go around more than times than the Moses and all the children of Israel combined? Huh? You gonna come around here and then come all the way around? No, you can't come all the way around. You got you gotta you gotta keep it going straight. We reached over a million people. And since that broadcast is, is hot with wisdom, saints, if you listen to that broadcast, listen to what we're talking about. Is me and Arrhenius, um, oh, li listen what the Lord said. Here's what, ain't Jesus powerful? King Jesus said this. He said, he said, it's, uh, you and Arrhenius collaborated. Through, through the ministerial, uh, through the ministration of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So it's a collaboration. See, when, when angels come on your, your, your life, your ministry, your, your delivery is way more heavier. Especially when you know them. When you know your angels, your life becomes more strapped. The knowledge of angelic ministry intensifies the power you release in a moment. Even your words carry more glory light when you know your angels. Now watch this here. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you all act like it's so hard to know your angels, but you already know your demons. You, if you, because you prophetic enough, you know the spirits that speak to you that make you not be the best woman or the best man you could be in a moment. You know the spirits that come in your mind. Well, that's bad impregnation. Don't think about it. You're going to have to watch the replay to understand. You're going to have to watch the replay to understand what I'm talking about. Some of y'all are still on the slow bus. I can't believe this. Unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't believe this. After all I have done for you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What this, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is out. This is terrible. I'm going to tell you this. All right? I'm going to tell you this, and I'm just going to tell you this, and after I tell you this, don't tell anyone that I told you this. I'm going to tell you this, and after I'm telling you this, make sure that what I'm telling you is being told to this.
you know the spirits that arrive in your mind so that you won't have the mindset that God wants you to have. You know. And when those spirits arrive, their whole purpose is to sentence your mind into a prison where the Holy Spirit will be not allowed to visit you. Now, saints, I want you to see this. When you go to jail, people, can't, people that you know can't visit you 24-7. There might be a little visitation, but you can't talk with them all day. You can't walk with them all day. They have a certain moment where they can get a little entryway, but they can't access you all the time. You got to understand when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty the captives, the opening of prison to the those that are bound. When Jesus is talking about the opening of the prison, these are people which, which was you that are serving a life sentence in sin. And see, when you serve in a life sentence in sin, what takes place is you're not free to be accessed to who loves you. You in chains. You're alienated from them. You alienated from the life of God. See, when you alienate it from the life of God, you function like an alien. You caught that? When you alienate it from the life of God, you function like an alien. Saints, all demons don't look the same. Some demons... Some demons are very small in stature. Some demons are very large. Some demons look like Halo 2, the video game. Some demons. Now, let me just tell you this. Some animals on this earth represent demons. A rat represents a demon. Oh, I'm going to mess some of y'all up. A cat represents a demon. That's why cats eat rats. Oh, I'm messing some of y'all up. The most evilest cat is the black cat. They got to step on some toes. But it's better, it, you, it, at least you know. You hand it from the prophet of God, at least you know. So, 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 I mean, you know I don't mean you no harm. I'm just telling you the truth. At least you know. Don't rock with no pit bull. Don't rock with no pit bull. I know some of y'all think that the pit bull and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. These mixed breed animals are very dangerous. A mixed breed animal will kill you. And, and you can say, oh, I've trained him. All it's called an animal. It's not no daggone human. So you can train all you want. When they're ready to be animal, they're going to be an animal. You, you have heard of stories of people that got ate up by that big old pit bull? They, the, the pit bull was up there. One day the pit bull said, nigga, please, I ain't, I ain't, <laughs> shoot. You, you think that I was going to be up in here all day, every day, just being, a, being Mr. Nice Guy? Today, you're going to learn today. Shoot, today, today, I, I, ain't, I ain't being nice today. Not today. You're going to learn today, big Big pimpin' spinning the cheese. Not only the rat, the cat, also the roach. <laughs> Roaches are demons. See, see, <laughs> you know what? You know what natural people gonna do while they watching me. Oh, here he go. He talking about roaches a demon. See, I knew this was a false prophet. <laughs> I knew, uh, Susie, I knew this was a false prophet. Come on. 
Come on. <laughs> the roach. The roach is a false false prophet. <laughs> You know that roach is demonic? You ever got happy when you saw a roach? How many of y'all ever had joy just hit you? You felt the power of God. You felt the power of God just glorious upon you when you saw a roach. How many of y'all just came into visions and dreams when you saw a roach? Saints, why you think children, if, if a child see a roach, they not going to sleep? Unless they on you and they know that you up while they on you. Big children. Your big children ain't going to sleep. Saying some of y'all got disrespect for teenagers. What you need to do is put a fake rat or a fake roach beside their bed. You see how they come and listen to you. Oh, mom, mom. What, what? You're disrespecting me tonight. What you want? This is this, this, this son. Can you come in my room? No, I can't come in your room. Me and you is not married. I'm going to tell you like this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you like this. You messed around and was disrespecting me tonight. What you want me to come in your room for? They say in room, can you come inside it? No, I can't do that. I done told you what I'm doing. We work with them. We Catholics. We, we done turn into nuns and whatnot. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this right now. Saints, roaches, I in the demonic uh, place. Um, let me say this. Spiders. Spiders are in the demonic place as well. Spiders are in hell. Roaches are in hell. Rats are in hell and they torment people and they talk to you. They have a voice in hell. And sometimes these are the spirits that are inside of your body while you're living on the earth. Imagine that. When you're not listening to God, sometimes you got a rat inside of your soul. Damn. I almost said something else. I don't want to go viral, though. <coughs> when, when you rebellious, you take on certain animals in the animal kingdom you start operating through them and you signify them. Saints, I'm gonna tell you something and some of you all will remember this. When people leave your life, you may see an animal that you never saw before. See, I'm in the deep prophetic. Mala, Casto, Fola, I didn't. See, watch this here. Do you know that some, some of the stuff that I carry is so deep, I'll be saying, well, maybe I'll release it at the conference. But because I'm supernatural, I'm going to release the deep stuff now. And then at the conference, I'm going to release even deeper than what you thought was deep. You see that? So, so you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Because in my mind, I'll be like, damn, man, that's hot. I just prior released that until at the conference, but I'm so supernatural, right? I'm not human. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deep stuff and give it to you now. And I found out the prophetic secret that when you take what you have that God gives you freely, you have received and you freely give God freely give you more. So I found out that prophetic secret. You see that? So now you understand why I keep on coming with the fresh. It don't matter how long I stay on the line or how much videos I do in a day, I still come and give you deep stuff because the more I serve the food, the more the chef give me more food. And see, when you become a recipient of food, you actually become a chef yourself. So you can create food in the spirit. You already receiving food from God, but you can become a chef 
and get promoted to being a chef where you can create your own food. Because God done invested enough wisdom inside of you and he knows what you're going to create is going to be accurate to what he wanted you to echo anyway. Because see, once you hear the voice of God, you can also step into knowing his voice. And when you master knowing his voice, then you can step into the echoes of God. So he might say something that's not even direct to you. And you hear the echoes and you start echoing it. You can be so prophetic that you can tap into a conversation that was ordained for another woman. But because you are the woman that she refused to be, God will give you the conversation. You can tap into the word that was destined for a man. But because the man don't want to step up to the rate that God called him to step into, you can... Ah, you, you, can ah, you can step into their conversation and the same thing that God was about to say to them... You'll intercept it, you'll catch it, and God will speak it to you. Saints, what do you think the word of God meant when he said many prophets and righteous men, they, they desire to know the things that you know. They desire to see the things that you see. They desire to hear the things that you hear. What would you think he was saying? Elijah didn't get to hear this, but you qualified for the next realm that Elijah never stepped into for you to carry this mystery inside of your being. It was Moses that did not step into this, but you stepped higher than Moses' realm to step into this place where you can hear what Moses could not hear. It was Ezekiel that did not know what you know, but because you stepped out you stepped into a higher place than Ezekiel. Now Ezekiel's revelation, it was supposed to go higher, but because you went higher than Ezekiel, you tapped into a conversation that I was going to release to Ezekiel, but Ezekiel was not ready for that place. Abraham stepped into the revelation about money. But you get to know something about money that Abraham never knew about. Because underneath this new blood covenant, you get to hear decrees. You get to hear declarations. You get to hear revelations about sowing, about seed time and harvest that Abraham never knew about. You got, so you get to hear different uh, apostolic authoritative declarations to release. You got the power, Jesus said, to bind and the power to loose. And because they did not get to hear or see it, and God gave it to you, that means that you got a higher financial anointing. You got a higher money and grace. You got a higher sowing power. You got a higher wisdom for finances and you got a greater ability to decree a thing and it shall be established. Money! I wish I had a preacher in my day that I could listen to like this. Huh? I wish when I was small, I had somebody I can go on social media and listen to them, and they gave me the fresh word of God every single day. They didn't put no command on me that I have to give them some money to teach me. Oh, yeah. You, you, listen, you got people all over the world calling for mentorship. You got to pay me $100 if I mentor you. You got to pay me $200 for one-on-one. -on -one. But Prophet Joshua Holmes don't do that. Prophet Joshua Holmes come on every day and give you a one-on-one. -on -one, and my one-on-one -on -one is better than anyone's. And, and Holy Ghost keep on talking. And the Holy Ghost keep on walking. And the Holy Ghost keep on moving. And the Holy Ghost keep on touching. And the Holy Ghost keep on... Ah! And the whole, ah!
1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11 says this, For what man knoweth the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God, no man knows it, but the spirit of God. You see what it says right here? Even so, even so, the things of God, no man knows the things of God, what? But the spirit of God. So, The spirit of God has to come on you <clears throat> for you to know and understand the mysteries, the secrets, wisdom. It's the spirit of God that's opening up your eyes to things. It's the spirit of God that's showing you things. It's the spirit of God that's allowing you to enter into places in the heavenly realm that other people are not ready to go. See, saints, let me just tell you this. Some people say, well, you know, anybody can tap into this. It's not true. Because once you tap into this realm, if you are not on fire for Jesus, you could die. Ananias and Sapphira would have been okay if they was walking with Thomas. But because they walking with Peter, Korah would have been okay causing division for Balaam. But because he causing division for Moses. So in the spirit realm, it, this is not just, um, you can't be, you can't live any type of life. You can't be in any and any type of person just to step into these revelations. Because these Revelations come off of God being able to check you and you still in love with him. These revelations come off of you going through dirt, going through all type of darkness and you still loyal to him. This come from you not ever betraying him for nobody, no money, no opportunity, no situation. <clears throat> so, so hear me. You listening to a bona fide, qualified friend of Jesus Christ that's carrying a mantle like no other. My path is not like no other. My anointing is like no other. My ministry is like no other. Jesus told me the reason why we're reaching millions of people because he put this ministry underneath an open heaven. He put this ministry underneath an open heaven, JHM underneath an open heaven. That's why we do it what no minister has ever done in the history of ministry. Me. Because it's underneath an open heaven. And watch this here. I don't just be all blabbing off of nonsense. I don't be preaching no recycled message. I come with the fresh man of God. Because I'm a fresh man of God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 says this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. You understand? We have not, we have, we have received not the spirit of the world. Now, saints, remember, 
Remember what happened? Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Remember Jesus said that? He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Now, what does Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 say? For we have not received the spirit of this world, right? So we can put two and two together. That if the Lord said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And the text says, we have not received the spirit of the world. It shows us that we have not received the spirit that causes us to lose our soul. We have not received the spirit that will cause us to be manipulated by demons. We have not received the spirit that will cause us to betray God. We have not received the spirit that will cause our soul to be ignorant, rebellious, blind, enslaved. Imagine that, saints. Isn't that amazing? Look how I put two and two together. The spirit of the world is a, a, an opposing system that encourages you to do everything God does not like and encourages you to do it by telling you that you're going to receive the things that God wanted to give you all along if you would have did what he liked. Saints, the reason why people start playing the lottery is because in their mind they believe that the world, they receive the spirit of the world in that aspect. They believe that that is more valid than you sowing a seed into rich soul, into your man of God that's teaching you the word. They think that gambling is more reliable, is more capable of releasing wealth than the anointing and power of God. And so Satan says, play these numbers. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this, and this is a mindset of the wise. I don't want nothing that's not a harvest. Saints, I've had many people offer me cars. But I knew that the car was not a harvest. I could have took the car, but I know it's not a harvest. And whatever is not a harvest will not carry God's emotional system in your soul. When you get it, there is curses of sorrows. I don't want nothing that's not a harvest. And so I know what I sow, I know where I sow, and I know when what I sow is coming back to me. And I know when what I sold has not yet come back to me, even though something is appearing. Even though something is appearing, it doesn't mean that it is a visitation from God. Just because something is appearing, it does not mean that God is now answering your prayer. Appearance 
is not confirmation of divinity. A door is not confirmation of favor. La socule fan de levance. Remember this phrase, satanic progress. Satanic accomplishment. And satanic windows. Remember that, huh? You see that? Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? Somebody give it to me now. Give it to me now, now. Come on, come on, come on. We at, we at. Don't you want to go Mount Everest? Don't you want to go Mount Everest, huh? Don't you want to go up? Don't you want to go up? You ain't got nothing to do. Come on, come on. You got fries in your hand, huh? All that salt on them fries. You know you got high blood pressure. Come on, come on. Your feet swollen. You got elephantitis. You can't even put the strap on your heels. Come on, come on. You can't even wear your Versace sandals no more. Come on, don't you want to go Mount Everest? Huh? Don't you want to go Mount Everest? Satanic progress, satanic accomplishments, and what? What's the last one? Satanic windows. Now, saints, I want to speak to you in reverse. Satanic windows are so de uh, deceptive because you know. Jesus said, watch and pray, but I just heard Irenaeus speak to me and he whispered to me because he was having a conversation with Jesus and Jesus told him to tell me this. Irenaeus told me that the same way Jesus has watch and pray, Satan has watch and pray, P-R-E-Y. Satanic windows is the realm of Satan of watch and pray. And so watch and pray. He's the predator. You the prey. But I'm a he. Oh, see, Irene has just interrupted me again. See what he just said? And look what he said. Irene has just said this to me. In Jesus' realm, you watch and pray to experience the divine talker. You experience the talker. Because when you watch and pray, it's a prophetic realm. You experience the talker. But in Satan's realm, the watch and pray, you experience the what? God going to give it to somebody on here. Come on, come on. Type fast. The Holy Ghost said he's going to give it to you. See, see, Arrhenius, Maka, Plasta, Plasta, Ko, Seketele, Mosta, Ketele. Somebody going to get it on here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. There it is. There it is. See, see, I just gave you the scroll. See, 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 see. Look at that. Look at that. See, you, so, 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 so. You just experience what I experience all the time. You see that? It's a lifestyle. It's a movement. 
You see that? You see how, how the transfer happened? Hearing the voice of God. So now you know how I empower people to prophesy off of that. You see that? I just take my realm and give it to you. It's to show you what you've been called to do all along. Bible said Moses took his spirit. See, and I'm live. We didn't plan that, did we? This is fresh revelation. I'm live. This live revelation. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I did not know that I was going to talk about this when I got on. But because I'm in the prophetic anointing and this is what is in the region of the spirit that I'm in. And Jesus dropping stuff constantly, the more I give you. more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand. So, so in, in Satan's, in, in Jesus's realm, watch and pray is where you experience the talker. In Satan's realm, watch and pray is where you experience the stalker. So Satan looks at you to see what aggravates you. And when he watches and sees, okay, this aggravates you, he said, oh, okay. So I'm going to let them feel like they're so powerful in prayer and they're powerful in sowing and they're powerful in praising God. And then I'm going to send someone that's going to do the very same thing that I observe angers them. So you're going with a momentum with God and your momentum is just so strong. And then Satan say, yeah, okay, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right, they're in the momentum. Okay, let me let me enter somebody. Okay, let me enter somebody. And he picked the person and, and he have them do the very same thing that you, and now, 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 now. The stalker is attempting to shut down the talker. Because when you can't hear God, you're too weak to do anything divine. When you can't hear Jesus echoing in your mind, you're too weak in energy and strength to do anything that's supernatural. When you can't hear God, your, your momentum, your energy, your strength, your excitement, your passion, your zeal will be challenged. So watch this. In this realm, watch this. You have to obey God through discipline, not tangibility. Mm. a genius anointing. It's a genius anointing. I'm empowering you. In this realm, you obey God through discipline, not tangibility. The reason why many people are in hell today is because they try to serve God off of tangibility and not discipline. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I feel the anointing and the fire of God all over me. Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to contain myself. I don't know. Two more minutes, Jesus. Two more minutes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
listen, 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 listen. Do you know what's happening? You're receiving power for this week. All those spirits that were sent by Satan to ever come against you, they're going to look at you and run. They're going to look at you and hide from you because you done got the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of what? To the, 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 to the pulling down of... Str- Money! Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. In him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto you. He's of God. And he has been made unto you wisdom and righteousness. Hallelujah! Ho! Ho! You, you feel it? You feel the anointing? You feel the fire of God? Something's moving. Something's changing. Seeing his glory all Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. The fire of God moving. Glory of God moving. Power of God moving. Spirit of God moving. Money moving. Grace moving. Healing moving. Freedom moving. Liberty moving. Shackles breaking. Chains breaking. Yokes destroying. Right now. You are in Christ Jesus. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. And of God, he has made unto us, Jesus has become your wisdom, your righteousness. Mm. Say, so you catch it. Oh my God. Do, do what she said. Jesus has been made your wisdom, your righteousness, your sanctification and your redemption. Saints. So the fact that Jesus is in you and he is your wisdom you have every decision-making ability inside of you to be perfect. You will never sin against God again if you believe this, if you receive this. You have inside of you all money-producing grace. All wealth is inside of your spirit right now. Your soul is carrying immeasurable money. You have wisdom for every relationship right now. You have wisdom for every relationship. 
You have wisdom for every vocabulary. You know what to say now. You have wisdom for every thought. You know what to think now. You ain't got to wonder, what do I think, what do I think, what do I think? You have wisdom for thoughts now. You have wisdom for your imagination. You have wisdom for your expectation. You have wisdom for your faith. So watch this. When you step into the wisdom for your faith, the Lord will tell you who not to share your vision with because they are not going to be in support of your level of faith. So when you feel God telling you don't share about your new house, your new lifestyle with this person, it's because they are not in the wisdom for that level of faith. That level of faith will not be accepted, celebrated, and rejoiced in by them. Ain't the Holy Ghost articulate? Is it the Holy Ghost so articulate? Ain't it? Ain't it? Watch this here. I just heard Jesus say this, King Jesus. Look what King Jesus just said. He said, son, also tell them that there is a wisdom not only for faith, but there's a wisdom for your prophet. You know when people are not in agreement with your prophet. So if you have to be around them, play stupid. Well, how's your prophet doing? Yeah. Right. Oh, well. I heard he has a toupee on his head. Is it true? Um, I don't know. I'm just assigned to hear the word from his mouth. I don't know about his toupee or nothing. Oh. Well, I heard... I heard that your prophet liked donuts. Does he like dough nuts? Dough nuts, because you know what the word says. Does he like dough nuts? Well, I don't know what he likes. I'm just assigned to hear the word from his mouth. Um, that's, I'm not really focused on that. If he liked donuts, well, that's him. But I know that what I'm supposed to do is hear the word from his mouth and God has assigned him to me. I don't, I don't pay attention to his donuts. Oh, so he don't like donuts? I'm not saying that he don't like donuts. I just am not assigned to focus or figure that out. Oh. Well, I heard. Wait, can you back up just a little bit? Because you got halitosis. You got, you got your last boyfriend breath on you. Your last boyfriend, your last encounter breath on you. Can you just back up just a little bit? Can you respect that, OG? Just, can you give me that? All right, thank you. Well, I heard. Hold on, you ain't. All right, hold on. Wait. Wait, wait. All right, go ahead. Well, I heard. I heard. That there are many. False prophets arising. And I want to ask you. Do you think that he is a false prophet? Well, I do believe that I should give you. I'm going to sort of see the gum when I'm finished talking to you. That's what I really believe. But I'm not assigned to find out if he a false prophet or not. I'm just a sign by Jesus to hear the word from his mouth. 
it was never my judgment, my assignment to find out whether or not he's false. I know if the truth, which is Jesus sent him to me and Jesus is not false and the Holy Ghost is not false and it's still called the spirit of truth. If the spirit of truth assigned him to me, I'm sure the spirit of truth will not give me what is false. I'm sure after I cried out and asked Jesus to take over my life, that Jesus wouldn't give me what is false. I'm sure after I got frustrated with what the path I was taking and I done been through church anity and I done been through Bible energy and I done been through all type of religious aspects of meeting people and I still felt empty. And now I feel like I am on top of the world. I don't believe that God will send me something fake after I let Jesus know I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to fail him. I didn't want to fall into no trap. I didn't want to miss heaven. I did not want to be rebellious. I did not want to fall in the pathway of those that went before me. I did not want to fall short of the glory. I don't think that God will send somebody to me after I let God know, hey Lord, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Use me. Take me over. Fill me with your spirit. I don't think that God Because if God was going to do that, he could have just left me where I was in emptiness. I don't think that God was sin. And then I don't think the devil would send somebody that would spend time to teach me more than anybody has ever taught me in the history of my life on the earth. I don't think that Satan will send a young man that could get any woman he want, anything he want, he can buy it, to take time out of his busy schedule and to spend it with me so that I can come out of my sin, my bad habits, my bad thoughts. I don't, I don't think that Satan will send somebody That could enter any arena of life, but would spend hours giving me wisdom that I always wanted to hear, explanations that I always wanted to know, and mantles that I always wanted to carry, and make it so accessible to me without placing any heavy demand on me in return. I don't think that Satan will send somebody. that clearly rather see me free than to see me in bondage. I don't think Satan will send anybody that will show me more love than my own parents, that will show me more love than my own children. I don't think. 